All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to our BattleTech Advanced 3062 Irby Derby campaign. Uh, today we're fighting Comstar, and right off the bat, we well are met with enemy reinforcements right next to our own deployment. So some of our facings are quite bad, or since Irian has a rear arc against the enemy reinforcements, um, just to name one. And yeah, it's going to be an interesting start to the fight. So we're going to just reserve down like we usually do in situations like this and try to let Comstar shake loose their reinforcements a little bit so that we can, well, shoot them without any sort of trouble or delay. Now they're taking shots <clears throat> right away at our Phalanx battle armor, which is a little bit of a recipe for disaster for us. Uh, those battle armor pieces can't take all that much punishment. Uh, and yeah, one shot does go into the rear of our Centurion CM9D, and, you know, every little bit of that will add up as the battle continues. Now the silver lining is that while Comstar usually drops six mechs in a single lance, well, we're doing that now too. So we have six mechs, we have two battle armor, we're not even outnumbered um, by the standard Comstar lance. Now there are two enemy lances here, so probably twelve mechs in total that we have to take down, at least at the moment. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if there is another reinforcement drop as well, but I think, well, we out-tonnage them by quite a bit, which can often be a uh, quite an asset. So we're going to take Edmund in his Irby land and start dishing out a little bit of punishment. So let's go over here to their left, just flank an angle, and see who has too little evasion for their own good. So the Thorn is a decent fit, the other Thorn does not. ER large laser would be nice to take offline, so let's take a look at that. There's a lot of thorns here. I never find the mech to be overly effective, even when fielded by the AI. I mean, yes, an ER large, medium, and a small on a 20 ton mech is good, but I just don't have the armor to make it work, even with advanced technology, which some of these do have. So, maybe we'll get the salvage pieces from their double heat sensors and other things like that. Can. There is an enemy Owens, and that one I do find generally to be effective, and that right there is why the uh, sensor lock just hits our entire lance. And if we had already moved, um, well, that'd be stripping two evasion down to zero kind of things, and that's never exactly what you want. Um, I think we will wait for that last Hussar to move as well. LBX AC10 is pretty good ar armament on it, especially fired at cluster. And sensitive targets like the battle armor to uh, guaranteed damage, and yep, they did just that. So only one flechette does hit there, which is good for us, I suppose. And reserving down to six, I'm hoping that the enemy, well, their main lance, the other one that we aren't currently fighting, will have a little bit heavier mechs for us to salvage. Comstar does tend to bring advanced tech, so any mechs that we can find will have, well, good parts for us to use for ourselves. And there is in fact a 45 ton mech on the way, so I'm hoping this is a medium lance, not a light lance, that will be, uh, will be facing. Now if it is, we will start to have some trouble, because sheer weight of firepower will eventually add up. When you're facing two Comstar lances, six each, it's the equivalent of facing, say, three lances of ordinary house mechs, four to a lance. So this is a pretty heavy resistance drop, even though there's only two on it right now, and those acid mortars are a problem. So they don't do all that much damage themselves, but their area of effect, and they increase the amount of damage we take from other things. Uh, in other words, they just guaranteed that every other shot that finds its way will be more effective for having done so. Um, I've often debated using uh, acid rounds myself, and it's just, it's never been something that I've gotten sorted, but it's not a bad idea. I think I should probably look into it. So we need something to go over there and distract. The Centurion's probably on deck. I want to kill those mortars um, that they're coming from. So let's get a look. Hermes 2 might be the mortar carrier. Yep, that's the Hermes 2. And way too much evasion for me to deal with. And pretty much all of this. They're moving quickly to get to us. Firestarter Omni, that's a Raven. Um, would like to Potentially look at that. The 50 tonner on the side as well. 
We have horrible, horrible accuracy on this. But I will try. Uh, LBX AC10 might be able to win this. And, and yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot to chew through over on the right flank. And we're going to have to get it done. Oof. Looks like an autocannon shell finding its way home in this interior. It's taking a bit of a beating this time. So that looks like, is that a hunchback? Yeah, 5M. Standard configuration. Um, we got lucky on that, I suppose. On the other hand, that means that we don't get very nice uh, salvage from it, which is not what I was hoping for. So I think it's just us left now. Let's go ahead and get a little bit creative here. Accuracy with the coil is very nice. Five evasion pips could be better. Boosting damage on that. Let's turn it on and see what we can do. Um, let's turn off one of the ERs. Actually, I think just firing in with the coil on this thing repeatedly is a quite effective tactic. 102 damage is basically like firing an AC-20 shell with no recoil, just we pay for it in heat. Let's see what we can do. Oh yeah. Okay. I've got no complaints there. Knocking down a light mech like that is basically signing his death warrant. So now what we can do is we'll come up here. Yeah. It's an obstructed shot, but that's okay. And we will hopefully just kill this mech. Right. Now, we have to kind of help our Marauder find the target. But once he does, those binary lasers are incredibly effective. Uh, not a perfect solution, I know, but that's what we've got. <clears throat> so let's move up to Dervish. And I think what we're looking at killing is this other thorn. Unless I have better accuracy somewhere else. But it doesn't look like I will. Yeah, no. Best accuracy is on the thorn. Medium lasers aren't the most accurate, but the SRMs should carry some way of fire. Very nice. That's some good work there. It's a good start. So now let's get the phalanx armor moving up to here. And I think this merits use of those battle armor SRM 4s. Let's give that a shot. Yeah, we didn't know King David's killed it. Very nice. Unexpected, but uh, very nice. I'm very much enjoying the phalanx battle armor. I've used other ones before, and I think I just really like this configuration because it packs so much of a punch for the tonnage and the size, and particularly I mean, the size is a wonderful thing for us. And we've kind of learned a little bit now. Of course, it's not going to happen. But we've kind of learned a little bit how to mitigate taking a true tremendous fire from these guys, and that does increase their longevity just enough to make them a little bit more useful. Um. So the Wolverine would be a decent option to start putting fire on that Hermes. But the LRMs, yeah, no, just too much evasion, so and there's nothing for it right now. That's okay, we'll just move over here and we'll fire in at the damaged thorn. Hoping that our LRM 20 rack might be able to knock it over. Among other things, so let's see what we can do. Very nice then the war taser. That should be a knockdown as well. Yep. Okay, so two of the lights are gone and the third is knocked over. Pretty good for us. And it's the start of the next round. So I think we're gonna lead off with the battle armor. Let's get them around the side here. And this should be a mech kill, I imagine. We did need some of the SRMs, but not all of them, so using them all was a little bit of a waste, seeing as I think that was our second volley, so... Um, okay. And let's try and get the other thorn bit as well. Let's see what we can do. All on target. These guys are light mech killers. Maybe not good for uh, much else, but... Uh, well, that they certainly excel at. And, let's see, what's the best way to get this guy? Mm, I could go through the rear armor, but I think... You know, his left side probably would be more effective. 
Assuming I can do it without terrible color, which this should be okay. I don't think the other ones will be able to do that much to us. And, yep, there we go. So we denied him the chance to move on initiative 9, which works for me. Pretty good. Pretty good. So now we've got the two lights here, the Owens and the Hussar moving, as well as it looks like two lights from the main map, oh, sorry, the main enemy lance. At least one of which is going to get out of Raven over there. We take some damage. So the Wolverine, only two evasion pips, um, taking some damage, but that chassis is very rugged. Um, doesn't actually have the rugged perk, but it's a very nice, um, tough mech design. It can take that fire all day. Phalanx Battle Armor. A little bit scary taking those shots, but I think the Hussar will have run out of its luck. Um, having moved such a short range, and not gotten very nice evasion pips for it. Okay, so the Raven moving up. More fire of the Centurion. Surprisingly effective, they do land a Narc. So all of their other missile shots will be more effective now um, at finding that mark than they were beforehand. A little bit worried we might have to retreat the, the Centurion this fire starter can cause us heat issues and just chew through the armor a little bit. But nope, he's going up top. Looks like putting an LRM wrap on the Wolverine. A little bit of an interesting choice, probably wouldn't have done it myself. I think they're targeting him because of the two evasion pips, um, making indirect fire, which is never a very effective thing especially without good pilots, um, at least not completely horrible. So, I mean, he landed a couple missiles, right? Might not have. No lines. Okay, those are those acid rounds. Luckily this time they only hit the Wolverine and a little bit on the um, Marauder, not the three max like last time. But still, it's not fire that they want to take, so... We'll have that Hermes 2 as our first priority. Moving north. Here comes the Hunchback. C20 shell. This is nice. You know, I said the thing earlier about the mortar rounds, but that AC20 shell, with or without the mortar rounds, is an issue. It needs to be resolved quickly. So, we we'll go over to the Hussar and kick him and then shoot, and hopefully this will just kill him out, right? 90% chance to hit binary lasers, plus that almost guaranteed hit. And push on this one. <laughs> oh, good job. I will never cease to be amazed at the number of stupidly high chance to hit shots that we can just whiff completely. Um, Alright, so we need to chase the Owens. Dervish is probably okay at doing that. Not great. They're not great. Um, what about the Ostrock? Yeah, movement speed is a little bit of an issue. I'd rather have him come around this side, I think. Start running up the middle. So let's do that and get the coil online. This should be good. Hold on up, please. Yes. Very nice. Building a lot of heat. That's sort of how this mech works. And the next round, I don't think anything will be in range of the coil, so we'll have that turn to cool down a little bit. Um, okay, let's chase the fish one. Somebody needs to go after this guy. The SRMs will at least land some uh, minimal amount of nearly guaranteed damage. The sink will defeat. Yeah, I mean, we got some shots on. We got tagged, marked, which means that we'll have some better shooting on the next one. Um, let's see what we can get. Not bad accuracy with the LRM there. Try that. Oh, it's not great. It's not great. Yeah, okay. That's the answer. So, LRM-20 is actually proving useful for a change, which is pretty nice. Um, and we'll keep on one year large just because there's no sense in actually shot not taking as many after all. Um, okay, light fire there, that's pretty good. I'm debating going around the right hand side, but my concern is I'd have to go all the way around here and back up to actually get a flanking position as opposed to if I just run down the center, um, I'll be able to get a flanking position shortly. Okay, here's what we're going to do. It's risky, it's uh, very much not a guaranteed strategy or even a good strategy, but we're going to go for it, because I want those acid rounds to stop. Okay, somebody has an anti-missile system over there. But, yeah, we did good damage. Let's see where the mortars are being held. Um, 
Oh, there's a mask there. That's nice. <clears throat> Although it's not my personal support equipment of choice, I, I do tend to prefer uh, superchargers. But, alright, moving the Airbnb lane up, let's try and take out that Owens, or at least mostly take out the Owens. I'm gonna pop a precision strike. I almost did the vigilance. To the this one. Yep, that was a good use of it. So, destroy the reinforcing lance. That lighter lance is completely gone now. So, that's six off the board, six remaining. And now we have a bit of an issue because our phalanx battle armors are very much out of position. I don't think I can. Oh, yep, we can mount up on one of them on the dervish, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> so, we'll just get him moving forward. But the other one is going to be just a little bit out of position. And by a little bit, I mean probably not useful for the rest of the fight. But, yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. And here they come. So we have the Hunchback moving at 6. Everything else will be moving at 8 or 7. Just before I have the chance to move anything, including that Centurion again, if they swarm him, we will have trouble. Here comes the Firestarter. Getting in some good hits. We'll have to rely on those 6 evasion pips, but if they can get us uh, above our stability threshold, then those will go away. Very much not what I want. Okay. Alright, I'm going with the Irby Lamb. It's okay. It's okay. And. Okay, that could have been worse. Here comes the Firestarter Omni and the Hermes 2. Uh, it would be hilarious if they fired the mortars at the Centurion and hurt their own max with the uh, acid rounds, but. That's probably helping for a little too much. Oof. Okay. Always scary to see a big gun like a PPC coming in at the Airbnb lands of light armor, but we managed it. It's alright. Let's see. What's that Hermes gonna do? He's thinking, he's thinking. The mask equipment will give him an absolutely sort of stupid high speed range, which is part of why it takes so long to process that turn. Didn't fire the mortars, interesting. And over here, lost but not forgotten, there is yet another fire starter. So, quite a lot of fire starters in this lens. We might be able to pick one up for ourselves. Not that I'm even sure that we want to field it, but that's a problem for another time. Um, you know what we can do? Let's come up here and see what sort of accuracy we can get. Precision strike. This is fine. This is good. Two 80% chances with binaries works for me. Not of course, from this one, but we land the other. And that hunchback is starting to take a little bit of damage, which is nice because I don't want that AC-20 shooting any longer than it has to. Um, so let's get the Wolverine up now and continue pounding away at that hunchback. I think, yeah, not really good enough accuracy to shoot anywhere else. We'll leave the ER medium off if I run double ER large and an all around 20. Two ER large is missing, and the all around is mostly clustering on the left hand side of that mech, which is, well, not what we wanted at all, so not the most effective shot there, <clears throat> unfortunately. So, moving on up, and I could really use a group sensor lock option for times like this. Let's see, uh, Raven, Hermes, best shots at the Firestarter Omni, and that ERPPC is dangerous. Let's pop Battlelord, see what we can do, and I guess we burn if we throw everything at him, but let's do all the SRMs. He can use severely damaged power starting to use. Okay, so tag marked. Should have lost evasive there, but there's some equipment on here that must be stopping that. Let's see. No? Interesting. Huh. Well, what's good to note is that they do appear to be carrying, uh, those fire starters appear to be carrying double heat sink kits. So if nothing else, we'll build them just to, scout, uh, to scavenge those instead of paying the 1.8 million C bills that they would cost me in the store. Um, I want this on slug. Mm -hmm. Not the best accuracy there. Let's turn off one of the ER smalls. This is just because we're on fire. We'll have a better shot next time. Let's go back to cluster. I think. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's a good start. It's a good start. Not terrible. I want to see, does this guy have a double heat sink kit too? Oh, come on. Oh jeez, that was terrifying. I'm not sure how we dodged that, given that we only had two evasion pips, but we did, so... 
Better lucky than good sometimes, although it's never something you want to rely on. Okay, so not all the fire starters have jumping and sneak kits, just lots of them. Move the Ostrock around. It's going to be a little bit of time getting into position again. Uh, what we can do is do a precision strike. And we'll launch in with the ER mediums. Uh, three clan, one non clan, just to have the fourth one wrap it up, unfortunately. But no, that wasn't bad shooting. We could put most of those on target. And there's a little bit of a lull just because we're out of position to take those guys on. But that'll be changing very soon. Getting the Lamb around, and we could shoot at. Well, Firestarter Omni is damaged pretty significantly from the front. Hermes 2 has decent rear armor, which makes him not a good choice. So let's keep going with Firestarter Omni, we might even knock him over. Structure exposed, core crit. Uh, no, no knock. He did go through his rear armor there, so that'll make it easier to finish that core out. And let's detach there and see what we can do. So move into the woods for additional protection. And let's slow this fire starter down with precision strike. Shooting in the King David's. One, two, three, and four. Now we got the knock. Yeah, see, that was useful for something. That'll slow him down again to initiative five. Now we're moving the forum, which should allow us to mitigate incoming damage from that guy. Uh, we're going to pop a Vigilance just to inspire the rest of the team. And brace. Yeah, so most of their stuff will be moving now, other than the Hunchback and the Firestarter, both of which I'm hoping to take off the board before the next turn. I think that'll be pretty good for us. Decrease the amount of scary firepower coming in. Uh, their Firestarter... Oh, jeez. Okay, we're burning with a sensor room, which is not good, because we do have ammunition on board. That could lead to an ammunition explosion. Um, that's what I get for going in against so many fire starters, but I was hopeful it wouldn't be an issue. Fingers crossed we don't have our mech just go kaboom. Oh, that's never something nice. Oh, jeez. Is that me? Nope, that was them. <laughs> Talk about ammunition explosions. Their raven just blew himself up. Um... Okay, I guess that's the first kill we have on this Hermie Lance, which I don't know exactly what you want. We do land a medium laser in from range. Of course, one for friendly fire as well with it, so I'm happy about that. And here comes the Hermes too. Hopefully those acid rounds aren't going anywhere. Important, anyway. We're just going to have to run the Centurion and sink his heat, that's the answer. Any sort of shooting risks just pushing farther over that red line. Not great. So the Hermes 2, short move. Going in with the Phalanx Battle Armor, thankfully missing. The ERPPC probably would have taken out a model. Let's move the Centurion. We'll do a Vigilance. I think we do have to move on the Sprint just to get away from danger. Exposing our rear arc, kind of have to. Yeah, and you're done. Sink that heat. Good job. He's moving on 7. There's some minor protection for next turn. Um, not ideal, but there we go. Let's get the Marauder. Can I get... what's the best shot that I can get? That'll give me help with elevation, 79% so chances to hit. That is worthwhile. We'll have to turn off the ER mediums in order to not go over the red line back here as well. We'll sink a little bit here with the binaries. Next time we should be able to do a full off strike. One and two. Alright, that's an arm offline. Not terrible. Do you want even more damage on that hunchback if we can manage it, so we'll move up with the Wolverine. And we're inside our min range for the LRMs now. We kind of need some clan LRMs to get consistent damage here. But let's go in Alpha Strike and slow this guy down to four. Let's work like a strike. I'll bleed out once you're remaining. All good things, the knockdown as well. All of those will go into your decreasing his accuracy. And oh, okay, pilot incapacitated. That's two down, four to go. And we're making pretty quick progress, if I do say so myself. Now the Dervish is going to come over here and try to put... Well... We really should just kill the Firestarter, shouldn't we? Yep. Please kill this mech, if you would. And we'll deal with the on the next turn. It's really not We're going to be very impactful. Of course, we couldn't quite get the kill, so that Firestarter is back up. 
And what if they stand up now there's cockeyed in this grave? It's like the Reading Tower of Pisa in that condition. Which I have no problem with. Uh, here it comes. Oof. I'm not sure... Okay, well, it doesn't seem to have landed any direct hits, and that's at least a small comfort. Let's get the Ostrock on the move. I probably should have gone around the other side with them. We'd have the coil online by now. I didn't think that they'd switch over to the other side of the field so well. But they did, so at least we get some good couple of shots on the one mech remaining in that outward flank of ours. And what's the best shot that we have? Let's go here and try and kill that first one. <clears throat> Does unfortunately make the frontal damage a little bit unnecessary to kill it here. And, oh, I mean, you never know until it's completely destroyed. So we're just sort of hedging our bets, but alas. So, bomb sled. Moving up. Get King David's online again, if we can. Yep, no problem with heat here. One, two, three, and four. Just consistent damage coming in from those guys. It's actually pretty amazing. Um, no real need for the other battle armor. It's too far out of position. Um, <clears throat> I don't think... I don't think I can put jump jets on those. I'm not entirely sure. It might be battle armor jump jets. I just am not aware of it. Possible. Fire going in at the Wolverine, literally. But uh, not much damage there. A little bit of heat, we will have to watch out for that. But that should be okay. I think we have more than enough on that side. So we'll move the Marauder up here and start shooting over with the binary lasers to the left hand side if we can. Of course, it is three mechs down, only three left. Okay, here comes some long range fire. A little bit of accidental fire on the Phalanx battle armor. I do have to remember to keep those sort of farther away because accidental damage was a significant part of the uh, work that was done to them on previous missions as well, and it's completely avoidable if we have good positioning instead of just a lazy positioning lately. So Centurion has uh, gotten rid of most of his heat. I'm thinking maybe we shoot in. Yeah, let's shoot in here. Well, no. That's alright. We just have so much better accuracy on this guy. That's a good shot. Left torso gone. Our anti-missile system is gone. Not bad. Not bad at all. So, now is the Hermes um, moving, and then I know I said we want to take them out first, and then one of the last three out of twelve left on the field. Not exactly ideal there, but, yeah, it happens. Okay, let's see what he's doing. He's running. More fire at the Phalanx, and if they take even another single hit, I think we will start losing models. I'd like to keep them out of the mech bay and the pilot sick bay if we could, so let's see if we can end this quickly. Um, that's a good shot. We'll do a precision strike to make it even better, so this guy down and moving on six in the next turn. Okay. There's something else. Yep, there it is. I will bleed out one turn remaining, but I think I just want to kill the mech because that will take two go rounds to actually do that one turn. Um, Alright, let's see what we can get. Coil, one online here, should be enough to finish this guy off. Let's see what we can do. Um, it's not showing properly the damage rating on, on it, should be around 80. Yep, 94. It's destroyed, mech gone. Go. Do left now. Wolverine's a little out of position, but we do have the LRMs on here, which does sort of mitigate that a little bit. We can at least get some long range fire on target, and we'll try on. Well, it's not like we're going to be hitting the tunnels on either one, so let's take that uh, chance. AMS system does come online from that FS9S1, which I think is that the one. No, single heat sinks. Yeah. Not exactly the one that we want salvage from, but oh well. Best shot that we've got. One and two. Both coin flips coming up tails for us this time around, but oh well. I think we'll be okay. Alright. Derby Lamb, let's get on the move over here to take out the fire starter. Probably won't be able to kill him from this. Yeah, no. He's got his, uh, 
Yeah, he's got his AMS system on overcharge, although I don't think it did anything. It did get decent damage. Not enough for any armor blowthroughs, unfortunately. Let's get Bobsled moving up. And. Well, actually, here's okay. We're going to activate his shielded stance ability. A little bit of out of protection. One, two, three, and four. Some structure exposed. Chancellor, of course, just. No, nope, not really useful for us right now. And we will have the opportunity to move something before that Hermes. I'm thinking we load in on him with the Dervish. At close range with all those SRMs. And uh, hopefully that'll be enough to take him out. Firestarter running into fire on the field because apparently he likes overheating. Which, I mean, hey, I'll take it. But not exactly the highest IQ move there from the AI. And let's get our shot in. He risks an eternal fire here. Well, that's Hermes 2 is gone. Just the one fire starter left. And that shouldn't be too hard to take out. I mean, yes, he does have full armor at the moment, but... Well, nearly full armor at the moment, anyway. Let's go up and around. Precision strike. Should be good. And that mech is dead, so... That'll be it for this mission. Nice and successful combat against Comstar. Thank you all for hanging around. We'll see you again real soon.